Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. First, a little trick of memory for which I need to make a correction. Thanks to you, who, of course, pointed out my error. I can always count on you guys for that. When I was talking about Simon Rattle's mediocre box of Berlin musical mediocrity stuff on Warner, I mentioned his earlier Birmingham Mahler Fifth. Well, I invented that out of nothing. It never existed. There was only a Mahler Fifth with Berlin the one that he did that I talked about, which I reviewed at classicstoday.com. Where that other one came from, I have no idea. I have to tell you, I mean, try as I might to keep all this stuff straight. And I do try very hard. Uh, there's just too much, too much of everything. And sometimes I hallucinate. So please forgive me. Anyway, it doesn't change anything I said about the box or the performances therein. So there you go. Uh, today, this morning, a cool little sort of like discovery for you folks who are into discoveries. Franco Alfano on Naxos. You know, one of the coolest things Naxos has done has been its series of music of Italian Italian composers from the first half of the 20th century. I mean, there are the great ones like Casella and of course Respighi and those people, but there's also um, a whole bunch of sort of second tier, I mean, you know, um, composers. And Franco Alfano is nothing if not second tier. He's famous today, if he's famous at all, for the absolutely wretched conclusion he wrote to Puccini's Turandot, which has possibly the most banal phrase in all of music in it. The moment when when Kalaf reveals his name to, to uh, Turandot, you know, where it's all just going along and all of a sudden the orchestra like picks up and it goes do 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 uh, general impression of him was in some ways confirmed and in some ways not. What we have here are one, two, three, four, well, five works, um, uh, the couple of which are interesting, and they really show you his strengths and weaknesses as a composer. First, you have the Sweet Romantica. Oh, yes, 32 yummy minutes. This is really pretty. It's like an orchestration exercise. I mean, the guy could really orchestrate in the in the traditional 20th century way, sort of film music-y type ways. I mean, you know, it's got all the regular effects. It has a piano part, an orchestral piano part that's quite effective. It's got harp glissandos whirling around and glockenspiel parts all over the place. And, and it's just yummy. The one thing it doesn't really have, and what Alfano apparently couldn't do and couldn't write, were tunes. He just didn't have much of a melodic gift. And that was really sort of, I think, the issue with him. But this has, you know, four movements, Notte Adriatica, Ecchi del Appenino, La Chiostro Abandonato, Oh, the Abandoned Cloister, naturally. Cue the faux Gregorian modal stuff. It's all there. It's wonderful. And then Natale Campano, which is like a company Christmas, a countryside Christmas sort of thing. But it's all in like one continuous movement. And it's, 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 one luscious orchestral effect after another, um, and it needs it needs some ooh, excuse me, and it needs some really hot tunes. That's what it needs, and it doesn't have them. Oh well. Next we get this tone poem thing called Una Danza. Now this is from 1948 to 1950, a 14 minute long danza thing, which sounds just like <laughs> the Sweet Romantica, um, and Nenia for solo accordion. Well, isn't that fun? If you're interested in curious Italian solo accordion music, then your ship has come home. Finally, the Divertimento per Orchestra Ridotta e Pianoforte Obbligato. This is a charming work. It really is. It, it ends with a with a really fast sort of Tarantella thing at the end, a perpetual motion. And if the, considering that it's a reduced orchestra, it's very, very colorful music. And then there's his most famous number from 1901, Amour, Amour. And this is the version for orchestra. Um, it's slushy and it sounds like Montavani or something like that. It really is a tune that is no distinction whatsoever. 
Um, but then none of this has any distinctive tunes, but it has lots and lots of luscious orchestration. And it, it's wonderful background music and fun to listen to. And I, I just liked it. I liked it just because it was slushy, mindless fun, basically. So it's the Orchestra Sinfonica de Milano, my sister's hometown team. Um, it's good to hear them. They sound quite, quite fine doing this music under Giuseppe Grazioli. Um, the performances are totally idiomatic. The sonics are really good. I, I give it, if you, especially if you could stream it, give it a listen. You really might enjoy it. You might find the lack of really distinctive tunes less bothersome than I did. It's entirely up to you. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care. <laughs>